again We know this is what we're meant to do So we wake up, put our feet on the floor Go and conquer the day like a warrior Like warriors Cause that's what a trap does We got your back so you can relax And focus on all the important stuff Like getting your business done Good afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to your weekly dose of business inspiration with the Coffee Shop Conversation Show. I'm James Brown of James Brown Voice, your voiceover with soul. And I am here hosting, uh, as always, with my uh, co-host, Sandra Ray. Hi, Sandra. Hey, James. I missed you. Um... <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Yeah, I I'm good. I'm good. Happy Monday. I'm still working on this whole, you know, time change. We changed times. Y'all didn't change times. What? I was just yeah. I almost shut up yeah. an hour early. So I was like, wait, no, it, I still have another hour. So yeah, we're we're hanging on till the end of the month. Right. Yeah. And then you guys change times, but Africa That's doesn't right. change times ever. I I don't know. It's <laughs> stable. We're unstable. We're just behind yeah. in Europe. I know U.S. the same way, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> what time is everybody? And I'm just like, what day? You know, if you're booking in the U.K. in a week or two, then yeah, you're gonna be a minute. So, but all right, where is Mr. What are we Peter? talking about today, Sandra? We're talking about planning and business strategy, aren't we? Business we planning is right. It's strategy development because those are both very important to your business as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I can honestly say I did not start that way. So no. I had to catch that up in my business. Oh, my goodness. Poor Peter. Peter is our <laughs> guest speaker today. <laughs> and he is there. He is, we promise. He is here. I promise you I'm here. You will actually see I am here. I'm just currently sitting in the dark. I'm quite impressed that despite the fact that you have no lights, you apparently have internet. That's that's quite cool. I know. That's quite uh, ingenuity is key. Mm. Is key. I do have uh, light bulbs that I can put up. So in a moment, I actually can have light. Um, however, I was in a rush to get to this section. So um, I don't know if you guys want to babble. I mean, I can carry on without light. It's not a problem. Could you perhaps tell us the story in a spooky ghost way? Oh, yes. Once upon a time. Mm. Create <laughs> some atmosphere and uh, you know, just terrifying to everyone about what will happen if they don't have a business plan. Oh, goodness that's, me. That's making oh. it much more effective. Oh, 100%. Uh, so once upon a time in a very spooky, spooky land, very far, far away. Um, I, th I think let's start at the very beginning. I think <laughs> if we if we start with the actual business plan, we get lost. I think we need to start before the business plan. So a lot of people think that a business plan is something that you create. It's a document. You slap it into a drawer. Um and there it sits and it collects dust. Uh, nobody seems to understand that um, a business plan is a living document. It's part of your business. It's something that is ongoing. It's consistent, um, which is why we have to start way before the business plan. And I, in the blog post that I wrote, I actually started so far before the business plan that 
almost doesn't seem like the blog post is actually about a business plan. Um, you know, I, I took a look at um, how do we gather the information? How do we gather the information that we are utilizing to build said business plan? Because if we don't have this information, there's nothing to build with. So we need to be speaking to our customers. We need to be talking to our suppliers. We need to be talking and engaging with the people around us. We need to be speaking to our peers. All of this information is part and parcel of how we're building our space. And until we have this information, we can't really build a plan. It's like saying, uh, we're going to go rob a bank and we're just going to wing it. Uh, you know, we're just going to give it our best shot. We'll see, may maybe we will actually leave rich and wealthy, but there's no plan. So the whole point is to gather as much information as possible. And once you have the information, you can then start implementing that information into a plan. Um, you know, in the blog post, I referred to um, uh, people like Gary Vanacek and um, uh, what is his name now? I'll think of it now, sent rockets into space, uh, SpaceX. Um, Elon. Elon Musk. I should know he's South African. Um, sort of. Sort of, yeah. Um, do you really think that these men got to where they were going without a plan? Not at all. They knew exactly who they were. They knew exactly who they, they knew their environment. They knew where they were going. They created a, They created the journey and understood the outcome before the journey even took place. So why do we as solo entrepreneurs not see the need for, hey, let's, you know, let's create a plan. Let's create a journey. Let's create the journey before we even take the journey. I think it's so vital. Um, and once you have your plan, it becomes a part of the fibers of your business, becomes the part of who you are and how you go forward. Uh, something I mentioned in the blog post, which I actually highlighted, was the fact that when your environment changes, when your finances change, when your customers change, that changes your product. When your product changes, that changes your plan. You need to know these things because one small change in your environment and no changing in the plan, and you're off course. You, you're now like a ship with no rudder and you're going in the wrong direction. You're going according to an implemented plan but your space is going in a completely different direction. Um, I also wanted to highlight how important it is that once you have the information and you've created your plan, you need to be reviewing that. And I was speaking to I was speaking to Sandra. When was it, Sandra? We we've spoken about this before. Your course for the quarterly review. You know, people don't understand the power of the information that you gather in that space when you are reviewing your space. Um, and some people don't know how. They don't, they don't know, what, what am I supposed to be looking at? Why am I supposed to be looking at this? Why am I looking at the numbers? Why am I looking at this information? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You're looking at this information so that you can build out your plan and modify your plan to suit your space and your environment. That way, you your plan is relevant. You don't want to work with an irrelevant plan in a relevant space. It makes absolutely no sense at all. Um, and then I wanted to take it a step further. Solo entrepreneurs have this thing where they wear many hats. They tend to, we have to do absolutely everything. We are our accountants. We are our um, social media experts. We are our own uh, leadership gurus, we are our own absolute everything. Um, the reality is that solo entre entrepreneurs don't have to go on a lonely journey. They can go on a journey supported by other entrepreneurs. In fact, they can even go on a journey supported by entrepreneurs that do exactly the same thing that they do because they can learn from each other. And when you, when you surround yourself with people like that, you're basically positioning the people that answer the questions that you need answers to, to to keep your plan relevant you know if you are relying on your your own ideas what do i think about my product 
and go to market. That's not what your customer thinks. No, so you need to be in a space where you have people around you that you can go, what do you think? You need to be able to go to your customer and go, what do you think? How does this work for you? Does it work for you? If it doesn't, how do I fix that? And once I fix that, how do I then change my plan to match that? So surrounding yourself by people and even taking it into the space where you're not a solo entrepreneur. You know, when you have a, when you have a business plan and you're the big head honcho and you're the only one that is privileged to the information of the plan and nobody else knows, they just do their job. How much further do you think you'll go if the members in your team are part and parcel of building that plan? They know the plan. They know the direction. They know where you're going. They, they're there to update it. They're part of the updates. They're part of the process. How much more cohesive do you think that team will function? Because they know exactly where you're going. So a business plan is not just a document. It's not something that just sits in your drawer. You use it. It builds you. You build it. It builds you. So I think what I'd like to do is just hand it back over to, to you guys and just say, like, what do you guys think? I mean, this is this is something that got stuck in my head and you know, I sat for a good couple of days writing out this article and my intention was to write about business models. But I realized how important all the different aspects and things outside of the business model, how, how important they are. So let's include those processes in our business plan and that will make life just so much easier. Back over to you guys while I get some light on my face. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, some interesting thoughts there. I mean, I, so you talk about, we talk about planning. Uh, I've always, I have goal, I've set goals at the beginning of um, the year and quarterly and, and done quarterly reviews. And I've worked out like how many, for instance, clients or customers approximately I would need to get those um to get to those goals and then worked backwards from there, which means, so it's like, I want X, which means I need Y, you know, this number of people, and in order to get Y, I need, um, what's before Y? God, I don't do the back. X, I need X. Before X, I need W. Uh, and go back like that, rather than going towards something. So I've kind of worked re-reverse engineered it, I suppose, in terms of what client, the amount of clients I need and in what genre and how many, how much, how much marketing I, I need to do to get there. Um, so that's the way I've looked at it in terms of setting goals, but interesting to see how others are doing it as well. And it appears that Lissita is going to start us off with this one. Hello, sir. Do join in. Lissita, are you there? Have you frozen? Has Lissita frozen, Sandra? Yes. He said his network Peter is not frozen. playing nice today. Oh, I saw his eyes move. Is he back? Mr. L. Peter, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mr. Brown. Am I audible? You are yeah. audible, yes. No, no love? Not working. <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> yeah, it's That's okay. We've lost the suture. We'll get there somewhere. Oh, let's do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I business plan. So, uh, yeah, like you, I'm definitely, um, you know, goal driven and action plan driven. Um, and I can honestly say when I first started the business plan kind of was like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna go, go work with people. Like, why do I need all that form formal stuff? But it's not formal. And it truly, like Peter said, it is a document you're working off and it's, it's a living document. It's not a do it and forget it. Um, so I definitely, um, and then with that, nope, that rebrand that launches today, um, I had to rework it again. So I to make sure, you know, like how's this fit into things and, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. L. No. It's not working for me today. Hey. I'm not working for me today. Not at all. We can hear you. But he keeps freezing. 
Mm. Oh no! Oh god! Now I've got double audio coming in. What the heck is going on? Oh, sorry. I'm going to have to log out and kind of can't put up with this for the next forty-five minutes. Just a sec. I'm going to okay. come back in. Peter. Yes. Um... Not there be late. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I do actually exist. It's just it's it's funny that technology <laughs> will do its utmost to do its worst when you need it the most. Um, so right now I'm actually holding my light. I see that. <laughs> Watch it, because you like have to. I, I, you're gonna blind us. <laughs> yeah. So it, it it is what it is. But you know, at the end of the day, you know. Entrepreneurs need to understand that we we started entrepreneurship and we got into entrepreneurship for a very particular reason. We need to remember what that reason is. Because if we can remember what that reason is, it gives us an idea as to how do we start creating that plan. Our reasoning for why we do what we do is a huge part of the plan that we create. Because if we create a plan that doesn't include why we do what we do, then what kind of plan is it? And are we even going to enjoy it? And um, you don't want to create a plan that you wake up every morning and you're like, oh, my goodness me, I really don't feel like getting up because I've got this plan that I've got to implement and I just really don't feel like doing it. And, you know, what kind of life is that to lead? And we became entrepreneurs because we wanted a particular lifestyle or we wanted a particular freedom. We We need to include that in our plan so that we can actually although I, living the entrepreneurial dream where you think everything's going to be a breeze and it's not going to be hard work that's that's an absolute myth but you do want to include your values and the things that actually get your um your blood pumping and your your brain just sparky you want to include those things the things that inspire you in your business plan so that when you wake up in the morning you you wake up with this this feeling of today I'm doing this. It's part of my plan. I want to do this. This this it revs me. I get all worked up and I can you know I can build. So and I, I think this is where a lot of people miss the mark. They think that, oh, I'm just gonna be an entrepreneur and I'm just gonna be wealthy. Unfortunately, um it's not going to work without a plan and you're not going to be happy without the correct plan so you know let, let's be let's really think about the plan that we're putting into place um Pumili, i know that um you are an expert when it comes to uh people and their emotions and how they're feeling and and, and where they're at and um, how important do you think it is oh extremely important um, when I first started creating the Healing Institute, I was very fortunate that I was also um, on the Grand Connection networking platform, which um, you know Carolyn and Susan, who started that. Um, they actually introduced me to you and Nestine, so that's why I'm here. And I hired Carolyn because she is a she's been doing business plans for 20 years, and I hired her to help me because I'd never done a business plan, all the businesses I'd had, but I knew this was a big, much, a much well, not much bigger, but I just knew it was important to have a plan. And she's got an amazing protocol or process that she takes you through. Um, so I haven't been as diligent to check in. I have always, in my mind when I have a, a free week, haha, <laughs> that doesn't happen very often, that I'm gonna re-look at the business plan. Uh, thought I would do that at Christmas, thought I would do that in the summer, so I keep thinking I'm gonna do that. So I definitely need to, to look at it again. Um, and because I know it needs massaging and I know um, two years ago when I started creating it, it's, you know, my business is not, it is much different than, not different, but it's, it's evolved from when I created that plan. Um, I also love what you said earlier, Peter, about sharing the plan with my team. Now, I think I have shared it with some of them, but I don't think that I've actually, we do have a regular regular team meeting every month, um, but I don't, I, I certainly haven't done it 
let's say in the last six months. So I might have shared it with people individually, but I think it would be very beneficial to have a meeting um, and share it with the whole team. Yeah, thank you for that. And who do you represent, Ms. Pramela? Why do I forget that? <laughs> okay. uh, so Pramelia Parham with the Healing Institute. We are a virtual global hub of holistic practitioners. We are out to heal the world. I love that. I love that, Pramela. Um, yes, our virtual clients were, well, I made money doing it this way, but they want to take it to the next level. And I'm like, okay, so what's the plan? What's the business plan? What's the, and they're like, well, but it worked when I sold it out of my, my, my car, my garage, you like, you know, that was great and dandy, but I'm like, well, now you want to sell in like stores and venues and events. And I'm like, that's whole, totally a different, but I made money doing it this way. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> but Walmart Myers don't care that you sold it from your car. <laughs> they want, they want paperwork and licenses and barcodes and all, because it's physical products. And I'm just like, do you even know how all that happened? She goes, well, so-and-so did it. But you don't have so-and-so on your team anymore. So that's great and dandy, but what do you know? And so I've been really strategic about building processes, building those processes in business. I mean, I get it. Your goal is just make X amount of money. But if you don't know how to get to X amount of money, um, then yeah, this is why the last six months has been a, a disaster. And, and you know, she brought me in as accountability, um, but it was really more about systems processes and figuring out what the heck's actually going on in the business. So it's been an interesting process. Definitely learn a lot, for sure, for sure. Are you back, James? Are we in stereo? Yes, back. Not in stereo? No, uh, I, I don't know what was going on there. Uh, maybe it's just sort of becoming infectious from across, <laughs> across the pond, <laughs> across from Europe to Asia. Right. Pond, is it? it's, we're, we're going from Africa, so we're going up the, uh, you know, up, up through Egypt and across and around. Can across keep, Suez, keep across it on the that Suez side Canal. of the world. Keep it on the side of the world. Yeah. Yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it over there. Keep it up over there. So, I Got love back. that, Mr. L. Are you back? Back? Or are you just going to listen? You going to try? You want to try? Um, is it happening? Can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> no, it's not working. Yeah, it's not working. being transported by carrier pigeon, or possibly by... No, I'll just, I'll just keep on YouTube. Okay, sounds good. Because That's this fine. is not... This is really, really frustrating me. <laughs> okay. That's fine. We will. Oh, we'll... um, I love that. No, I can't get him muted. Shoot. Okay, he's just like, okay, I'll just leave. That's fine. Um, what can we do here in North America and the UK to assist your government to have a decent internet? Is there anything we can do? Because we're like... willing. <laughs> yeah, the, the Africans really love European intervention in their affairs because we've never done that before. <laughs> now, you, know, you, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen, Pamelia? What? Tell me. All the internet will be stolen. Oh, <laughs> before it even reaches the households and businesses, it's going to be stolen. So, <laughs> nah, not now. <laughs> well, okay, um, we might want to leave the UK out because they've already put their fingers in South Africa. Yeah, um, but just Canada let the US do it. it because, of course, you know. No, well, I'm not in the US, I'm in Canada. <laughs> She's in Canada, yeah, we're different. Yeah, we're, different. Yes. We're, we're different countries, we're different. Uh, countries I mean, here. You know, we're neighbors, but, you know, we are different. We're different. I know, you know, as much as I res you wave my respect mate, the US, they do like to tell people what to do. Um, Canada, no. we're a little bit softer around that. <laughs> America's Thanks. hot. Thanks, Pramilia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Peter, rescue us. We're going. We're going down oh, the trail. Walk the states can't do that. Right. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Be nice, James. I, okay. I, I Peter, think, always nice. I, I think myself and Hendrik are finding this uh, very amusing, um, because I think us as South Africans, we've gotten so used to making a plan, 
We've gotten so used to, and there's this saying in one of our local languages, which is Afrikaans, which is a boer marker plan, which is a farmer will make a plan. He will make a plan. That is translated to Africans in general. We make a plan. We just make a plan. So right now, I've made a plan. I'm holding my light. And it's one of those bulbs that um, you have to make contact with it for it to be on. So if I lift my finger, oh, oh here we go. Uh, too bad. I made a plan. I've got a light. Um, it's just the way we function. And I, I think it actually lines up a lot with the topic that we're talking about. And the topic that we're talking about is your business plan. And sometimes you have to make a plan. Um, it, you can't just, it's not just going to happen. We're not just going to magically, you're going to write on a piece of paper and woo, in the next in the next year, you're going to have this successful business. It doesn't work like that. You've got to make a plan and then you've got to make that plan work. And you can't make a plan that doesn't work. Oh, look, I fixed something half. <laughs> well, that's great because now it still doesn't work. Even if it's half fixed, it still doesn't work. I think Hendrik will know the importance of planning, especially within the industry that he's in. If he doesn't plan, um, <laughs> Hendrik, uh, I think maybe once I hand back to Sandra, you can express and tell everybody what happens when you don't plan properly because <laughs> you will know i've been in your industry you you are functioning within your industry um you let us know what happens to our um well what would you call it our infrastructure if guys like you do not have a plan um sure. sandra I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hand i'm gonna hand back to you because i'm actually finding this quite amusing and i think my finger's gonna get a cramp and my light's gonna go off <laughs> It's so, like being around the campfire. This is great. Right, we should just yeah. sing songs and toast marshmallows. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. I don't and make want to a, sing. And make, and make plans. Make plans. Um, I agree. I have done... Okay, I was a gopher. I was a runner for construction. So I've done a little. And I do mean little. But so, yes. Um, And I live in a home that was built way back when. And then added on by people that didn't know what they were doing. So I live in a house that has lots of lovely and fun issues. Uh, when we try to remodel, we always have to add two to three hours and five to $600 extra because we know we're going to run into issues. So I really do know about the construction part planning. Um, that's extremely important. And then, you know, with with four, four grown kids and, and one that's going to graduate high school a year early, plans, like, I don't, um, I don't take that lately as, as the mama, um, and a, a, a child got mad at me the other day and I'm like, well, the other, a different sibling planned, guess what? They took that time slot. First come first serve. Like I only have so much time to really want to me. Um, but they were very unhappy with me. And you know, that person always gets what I'm like, because that person plans, <laughs> if you want to be in front, let me know and I'll put you in. The, you know, I'll put you in whatever space. Um, and, you know, that child takes after a different parent. And I'm like, it is what it is. You know, I'm a planner. You know, I have a calendar. You know, it, you're an adult. You know how it works. I, I'm sorry. There's not much more I could do about that. Um, things are already set in stone. You are going to have to figure it out. Um, but if I didn't, with with five kids and grandbabies, I would, yeah, I would be a hot mess. And, I would, and I've and i seen parents that do that and run themselves ragged because they didn't know the games and the schedules and all the things. And um, life is like that too. And that's one of the reasons I do, when I go to do the quarterly review, I do life review and business review because if your life's a hot mess, your business is going to be a hot mess. Like, I, I, I live it. I've lived it. I still have days where it's both are my hot mess. But I know if I don't have... I see people like, oh, life is a hot mess, but business is great. And I'm like, but are you, they usually burn out or something falls through the cracks or it catches up with them in one way or the other. So um, I'm very big when we're doing the quarterly review that we do both. We do, we do both sides because I want you to be able to show up in your business the way you want to show up. So I think that's extremely important. Um, Hendrick, come on in. I went on a whole different tangent, but Talk, talk to us about like infrastructure and planning and, and business planning. Cause I'm sure you would have a business plan just like you have to have a 
blueprint of what you're building or what you're digging or all those things. Um, thank you, Sandra. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to take a different um, direction and use something that um, is close to home. So um, a business plan actually needs to have, um, it needs to be there. Like um, Peter said that it's a live document. The people that you bring into the company needs to be people that um, are there to earn, actually to share the dream with you. Um, the reason I'm, I mentioned the fact that I'm going to take it in um, another direction is um, two, two and a half weeks ago, I um, got one of my biggest uh, jobs canceled. And for that was... Um, lack of planning actually when we did the um, incident investigation because um our guys were found working at about five meters high um it's a concrete floor so there was no protection uh, that was preventing them from falling to the ground so the order was cancelled we went for um, an icam or incident investigation during the incident investigation they understood that actually this number one is our first uh, incident. We've been in that company now for um, almost six, six months, six to nine months. And we've never had any incidents. We've never had um, one of our guys injured. And it's a very risky um, job that we were doing. They took that into consideration. They took how our guys are working into consideration. They took the trainings that we've been um, sending our guys on into consideration. And they came up to the decision that, you know what? We understand that you guys messed up, but we're going to bring you uh, guys back. Um, you are definitely not going to do what you were doing before. And also they were, I, I, I believe they also saw that the lack of planning part was on their side because our guys kept on requesting for um, support or for resources for almost two months, which they kept on um, postponing, postponing until the guys had to do what they thought was going to work at the moment. So if your business plan is one which um, is not solid, it does not speak to your values as a company. The people are not going to um, accept it. And once your people are um, not in line with your goals and values, it becomes a, a, a concern. It becomes a problem because I can tell you now, during that um, investigation, I went into the meeting and I said, no, I did the fuck up. Oh, sorry for the language, but I did, I did the, I, I messed up. So I apologized for what my team did, but upon in, in, in investigation, they understood that actually what was happening here was this was a team decision. And as the senior person there, I decided to take all the fall for, the, for these guys. So during those trying times, that's when also my employees showed up by being loyal to us. We, we had a meeting, we sat down and then discussed and said, guys, we find ourselves in a situation where they are canceling our order. And what do we do? What do you guys feel like we failed you guys as employees? How can we improve going forward? And um, we sat with these guys for almost the whole day and all of them, they were grateful. They were grateful. We left the meeting, went into um, the meeting with the company, with the client. Um, and, and unfortunately, I cannot mention their name. In that, in that meeting, our guys still showed us that they were grateful because they did, they, they even said that if it meant that the company needs to come back on site with different employees, they are willing to um to 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 
to leave the company as long as it was going to get, bring back the reputation of the company, not being aware that actually the, 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 the first five or six months, that's all the reputation that we needed because that spoke for us when we needed it most. So a lack of planning can definitely be uh, catastrophic. And one thing that is definitely going to save you is what do you expose your employees to? Uh, what do you, um, I, I, I remember we spoke about this a few weeks back when I said in your absence, your employees actually represent the business. So when someone talks with your employees, it must be to a point where they feel that these employees are representing their um, a company so well to an extent that we wish to see who's actually running the company. Not to, uh, to not, it, it shouldn't be a point of we wish to see your employer so that we can tell them that you misbehave in their, in their absence, but it should be, we are happy that you are working like this in the absence of your employer. And we are also happy in the fact that there's constant um, development because I told the guys when we got there uh, that it's a big job, number one. It, it's worth a lot, but I am not looking to make a cent out of that project. What we were going to do from that project, I was investing back in the guys so that they get the training. They get, um, uh, like, they shouldn't be at the point where they were uh, when we started the project, when we finished, because the things that they were exposed to, like your planning, uh, your risk mitigation. So the fact that for us, it was no longer about the money. This uh, echoed well against um, the bosses when we were in trouble. And now they said, oh, it's fine. We understand that you guys made this mess. And we are not saying that you're going to get away uh, um, without any consequences, but we'll get someone to come and do the job with you guys continuing doing so and so and so. And they further went on to say, this is the plan we have for you guys in future, for you guys to do one, two, three. And all these were things that we we, we thought that we were just like we were giving back to to our guys, not being aware that actually it was going to help us at the end of the day. Uh, that's Henrik from Teresano Earth Movers in Leidenberg. Thank you, Henrik. That's very honest uh, and uh, very revealing as well. About uh, thank you, to, thank you very much for sharing that about what can happen and uh, lessons you've learned. It's funny. I was interesting. Sort of, I was hearing some things on LinkedIn similarly today about um, the the importance of learning things quickly. Like uh, we all learn from our mistakes. It's best to make those mistakes quickly and early <laughs> and then get them out of the way. And uh, then hopefully one doesn't make them again. But this is, of course, how we grow from all of this. So thank you very much for sharing that tale. Um, who else can we go to? We'll go back to Peter. Awesome. Um, f first of all, I actually just want to applaud Hendrik. Um, uh, Hendrik, um, when he stepped into our space in the Ignite program, um, his space was completely different to everybody else's. There were there were 30 odd students and Hendrik was the only one that had a physical space, had a physical team and had an existing business. And he stepped into that space to, act, to actually learn. How can I run this space better? How can I? And he stepped in with that mindset. So after Hendrik being through the Ignite program and then stepping into the space and networking, networking with all the people around him and to see where he arrived and the mindset and to see Hendrik now for me is like the whole point of why we do what we do. There has to be a point to what we do. 
and that kind of is the point so i almost feel like a like i'm proud <laughs> I'm, I'm, i feel i feel proud um that's not something you can just put in the wash and wash away that's it's a it's a great feeling um something else i wanted to mention was the fact that yes we do have to have a business plan and yes we have to include those that are around us in in our plan. They have to be aware of, um, even our suppliers need to be aware of our plan, because as our plan gr grows, so does the demand for their product that they're providing to us. So they need to be part of the plan. And you'll, you'd be surprised how the supplier is willing to bend a price or to, because they're part of your plan. They see where you're going. This could lead to more that leads to relationships with your suppliers. So even just something that simple. Um, and then we realize, well, we've made the plan, we've started implementing the plan, but what do we do with the plan now? We're functioning. Well, we found all the information that we need. We've populated the plan. Um, we can't just leave it there. It has to do something. So this is where it goes from building the plan to implementing and modifying the plan because you modify the plan as your space changes. Um, and this is where I'm very proud of Hendrik because he basically modified his plan, took it on the chin, made a plan, and he's right back in the space that he was in the first place. So almost losing a contract, but then right back into that contract because he made a plan. And his space, and, and his space worked for him. But I think to those of you that are out there that don't quite understand or don't quite have the ability to on your own review your plan because there's something you have to do you have to review your plan you have to um go okay right well this maybe i don't even have a plan and maybe you need help putting that plan together but once you've got that plan together you need to at least at least quarterly we've discussed this before at least quarterly overview your plan and that's a process that's a process of accumulating information and utilizing that information to to modify your plan but that's where i stop and i think that's where sandra begins because um and sandra we spoke about this uh, like a, a while back and some of the people in our space actually took your uh, quarterly review um it's it's a course if i'm not mistaken it's, yeah it's um, a work it's a workshop yeah workshop with workbooks workshop. and um co-working space so, um, yeah. is, there any, is there anybody here that's actually done Sandra's? Pramilia has. Pramilia. Pramilia, Joanna, I'm trying to think who else is in drive, but Pramilia has, Pramilia has, and it has given me great testimonials. Oh, so, awesome, awesome, so, awesome. yeah, and the next well, workshop I'm, is actually this Friday. I'm going to wait with bated breath to actually hear um, some feedback on, on that because it's all part of the plan. Right, totally, a hundred percent. And I do want to applaud Hendrik for getting more and more comfortable of being called on in the show because I know that's not his, his, um, his love. He doesn't like to, <laughs> you know. He's like, and I get that. I am actually a truly an introvert, so I get getting called out. So, but I loved um, how you said, you know, your employees are a reflection of you, and your reflection of your employees. Um, that's so true. And that's part of your business plan. Like who are you going to hire and why are you going to hire them? Um, so that's part of it. Um, Gareth asked some good questions. If people have resources for building a business plan, do we have resources, Peter? You muted yourself. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't rely on myself and my own skill set to build out my yeah. business plan. I didn't either. So I, I can't really tell him you that no, question I, either. I relied on multiple people. And Nastine was a huge part of building out our, our plan. I was a huge part of building out why. Why do we do it this way? Uh, because I'm the, the people side of the business. Nastine is the technical side of the business, which is often why you will find me not doing certain things. And you'll see certain things happening in the background. And that's not me. It's, it'll be Nastine. Um, we, I surrounded myself with people to build out that plan. So I didn't build out that plan on my own. But if you're looking for somebody, and if I'm not mistaken enough, I get this correct. 
if Gareth is asking if there are people that are out there that are resources to building said business plan, the question would be, is he asking because he's looking for somebody to help him build out his business plan? Or is he the one that is looking to help others build out theirs? So Gareth, if you could answer that in the background, because I know that Gareth um, has been doing a lot in the background, not only for myself and the Business Academy Cafe, um, and now potentially into Explore Project, but um, Sandra, I know that he's actually been doing some stuff for you in the background as well. So maybe Gareth, if you could answer that answer that question in the background so that we can know, because I know Which, that Gareth is an incredible okay. resource. Yeah, he no, he asked other questions. I just started with that one, and it was about how to fix a poor business plan and when is it time to change the core plan. So I think it's more of the review process and what to do to fix it, I think is kind of where he's coming from. Um, and yes, I am definitely working with Gareth on many levels right now with many things, um, not only for my own business, but for my clients' businesses too. Um, yeah, Gareth, Gareth's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for him to tell me he's sick of me, but he hasn't yet. <laughs> um, you <he> might <laughs> eventually. Oh, let, let's take some hands. Uh, Parmelia, let's go. Come on in. Oh, well, I wanted to just speak to something I think Peter was talking about earlier, and that's scaling your business. And I think that's also so important to make sure that you have your business plan and that you've reviewed it because if you don't know where you've been you're not you, you don't really know where you know how to get to where you want to go so i think it's really really important for people to have um have an idea of what their business plan is and and especially for growing your business and scaling your business it's it's you can't do it without a plan uh what else was i going to say Um, possibly, I mean, possibly, sorry. possibly, um, cause I'm, I'm still curious to get to hear some feedback on the, um, on the, uh, on the workshop, on oh, the workshop. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So the tools that you get with Sandra's workshop are absolutely amazing because they're so easy to work. Now I've taken many workshops over my career and you know, you get kind of these convoluted, um, how you have to fill this form out and that form out. No, Sandra's are really easy to follow. Um, her workshop that I took back, I think it was in December, it was, you know, this, 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 and this. Now, what I do, what how I utilize the, the knowledge that I learned taking her workshop, and it's not that I didn't already know this, but I needed those tools to start putting it into practice. Okay. And that's what, what um, was really, really important for me because now I do that every month. Her goal action worksheet, I have three businesses that I'm doing. So um, I print out a goal action worksheet for each month. I have the dates here and then I can write in my goals. And then I can write in my action steps. So it's kind of like a to-do list, but it's not a big long one that you get lost in the middle of, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. So, um, and then what I do for each month is what I didn't accomplish the month pre prior, I will just keep it current, especially if I know that it's important for me to continue to do that. Sometimes over a course of, time you've written something that you think you should do or that you were planned to do and then you know a few weeks later it's it's kind of doesn't make sense anymore it's it's not important um but it's always good to look i love these goal sheets the planning goal sheets and now what i have incorporated is i take a week which is my next week <laughs> um a week before my next quarter so I did this um, during Christmas break because going into Q1 was in January. And then I did the all of the quarterly information and worksheets that, that Sandra, Sandra um, is part of her package. So next week is my last week before I go to Q2. 
And so next week I have, I've taken, well, I shouldn't say taken the week off, but I've made room in that week um, so that I can now plan for my Q2. So I won't be here on Monday, but <laughs> that's one of the reasons why. So I hope that was helpful, Peter. I love that. I love that, Pramaya. Um, yes, and that's why I'm doing the workshop on Friday, so people still have time to review and set up Q2 in time. And the workbooks are going to be improved, and one workbook will be for multiple businesses, Ms. Pramaya, because that was an idea you had and somebody else gave me as feedback. So uh, there'll be a business, multiple business quarterly review workshop. That's a mouthful. I got to figure out a new name for that. <laughs> <laughs> um and a life review workbook so i'm still still doing both sides because i still think those are extremely important okay mr l d w you got it hopefully this time it works <laughs> yay <laughs> right now um i just want to congratulate hendrick on 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 his achievement i think it's it's awesome to just bounce back like that uh it's it's beautiful and i think you're taking responsibility uh, always, always will help because you're not pointing fingers. You're saying, yes, I'll take the fall. And you fix that in the background. That's beautiful. Um, now, back to back to business plans. Um, here's something that uh, like a tip or an advice that I want to give to everyone that wants to draw up a business plan be involved in your business plan. You don't give it to somebody and say, this is what I want to do. Let them write it out. And then you say, I'm going to apply it because that's not your business plan. That is that person's business plan. If you have not been involved in it, forget it. You know, just like in going into, into marriage, you don't go in without a plan. You need to know, okay, uh, we're going to get married. We're going to have to buy a house. Am I working? Am I not working? Is my wife working? Not working? What are we going to do? We're going to have children and we're going to try and take them to these schools and all that. So it's a plan that you build up. But things happen along the way. And you've got to think on your feet. You know, as Peter, you were saying, a boot make a plan. You've got to make a plan to make it work for your household. You know, I mean, I, I I know I lost I lost a job, and I wasn't employed for three years, and in those three years, I had to make sure that I provide for my family. I had to make a plan. It wasn't planned before that uh, in year twenty fourteen I'm gonna lose my job. It wasn't planned. It happened. So what do I do? Make a plan so that my family keeps on living. You know, this is Lesecha Moko from Litchmok, your business development agents. Got there in the end. Thank you, Lesecha. Very nice to hear from you. And um, we've done quite well today, haven't we, really, in the space of fairly, <laughs> fairly severe uh, technical difficulties. But I'm glad that we managed to get everybody uh, either by candlelight or by carrier pigeon or whatever that's bringing the internet across the world today. Who knows? Uh, uh, sorry, I have to hop off. I've got another meeting that got scheduled right after this one. Um, um, but I wanted to just say I totally agree with Lestigia about being part of your plan. Don't give it to somebody else to do because it's your plan. So you need to know um, you need to own it and work it. So. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm on holiday. I'm on planning next week and on holiday the following week. So it'll be a couple of weeks. I'll miss you. Awesome. <laughs> Enjoy the holes. Peter, I want to <laughs> jump in with something quickly. Yeah. Did that work? Yes, that worked. Um, so something that actually just crossed my mind. I was thinking in the background. Um, with the question that Gareth actually mentioned about uh, what you know, what resources did we have? Well, I think I was just lucky because I was building a space full of entrepreneurs. So I basically had the resources 
of multiple entrepreneurs in one space. That became the resource. I think one of the biggest resources that myself and Nastine have lied, relied on in the background in regards to um, big decision making and 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 plan changing um, was also Mr. Was Mr. Levy, and I, and I, I, I'm sure every single person in this space, when you mention the word Mr. the name Mr. Levy, they're like, oh yes, yes, without without a doubt. Um, um, even the students, um, you know, all, all thirty of the students will 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 take a moment and will stop and they will tip their hat to Mr. Levy. He was a huge part of um of the course that they went through. And I think he managed to earn a level of respect that a lot of people just really battle to to get um just by being Mr. Levy. So I think surround yourself with people like that. That is a resource. He just happens to be um a leadership coach um and pl played a huge role in building up this entire network so resources people people are resources i think i think if um you're struggling to build out your your business plan uh, i think a a good conversation with with a mr levy would give you some clarity because that's what the man does he provides clarity if you are cloudy and you don't know which way you're going um, I often get like that. And my very first port of call, as I pick up my phone, I send Mr. Levy a WhatsApp. I'm like, when can we have a coffee? And he'd be like, oh, I'll meet you at Natita and we'll we'll go and sit and I will arrive going, I don't know why I do this. I don't know what the point of this is. And by the time I leave, I'm like, I'm doing this um, and I have a direction. So you need that before you can even start thinking about creating your business plan. So if you have an existing business plan and it's not working, I, I, I reckon figure out why. And Mr. Levy is a great person to help you figure out why. Um, he's absolutely brilliant at that. So, and then once you have a business plan, you're going to need how to, you're going to need to know how to maintain it. So Sandra is a resource and she is here. Um, which is why we actually, I think we're going to put the link to your, um, we're going to put that in the description. So if you're out there and you have a business plan or you're looking to review your business plan or you're looking to um, just gain the tools and the knowledge of how do you do that, well, then it's going to be right there. Um, some of my resources for you. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Always bigging up the tribe. I love it. So it's uh, another Monday come to a close. Thank you, everybody, for mucking in and mucking through with us. It's been great. Uh, and uh, everyone check out Peter's blog post, which is in the chat here, and read it thoroughly because it's full of fabulous information, which he wrote presumably in full light uh, with a pencil, I would imagine. Um, can I just say one thing? Yes. There's going to be a word in there that you're going to think I didn't write, but I did. <laughs> and you spot it. <laughs> you, Prize winning. When you read the blog post, you'll come across it and you'll be like, what is that? Do yourself a favor and look it up. And look it up. Oh, I did. Google is here. We love it all. Right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having us, guys. I'm James of James Brown Voice. Once again, uh, very nice to have your company again for the coffee shop conversation show and thank you sandra for making everything function just about as smoothly as it possibly could <laughs> yeah i have zero control on power and network issues on the other side of the world but yes the youtube show yes yay for it going smoothly today um i want to do a shout out to susan who does our cover our show notes she turns this amazing um youtube show into the podcast on spotify uh, and of course the blog post that Peter wrote, um, for today's show. Yes. I honestly thought Nassim wrote it. I'll be truthful, Peter. I was like, no, that must have been this. No, no, Peter wrote it. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Um, I am Sandra. I am the owner of Get It Done Coaching, and I help you reach your goals by creating bite-sized action plans, helping you do reviews, and everything in between. We will see you same time, same place next week. Have a great one.
Take care, guys. Bye.